Hello and thank you for joining us on Eddie's Written Canada. At this time of the year, Christmas, we are reminded of God's one desire, which can be summarized in one word. In fact, the entire message of the Bible can be summarized in one word, and that one word is W-I-T-H, with. With is the reason Jesus, our Savior and King, came to planet Earth. The Bible says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated means God with us. So Jesus is God with us. Jesus was born a humble infant cradled in an animal's feeding trough. God's character was revealed in his one and only son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Jesus, the fullness of God, wrapped himself in human flesh permanently to be with us as one of us eternally. God in the likeness of sinful human flesh, as the Bible says, and yet he was without sin. He even became a servant to sinners and then he died the most humiliating death on a rough wooden crucifix to save us from our sins. And one of his dying guarantees was to a thief. He promised, you will be with me in paradise. So that is the picture that the Bible paints for us of God with us. You need not fear him. Who would fear a humble infant cradled in a manger? For God says to you, do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand.
So Jesus came to our world to be God with us, but there was no room for him to stay anywhere except in an unhygienic, filthy shelter for animals, not exactly a palace or a five-star hotel. Is it possible that the safest place to hide from God is behind closed doors in our cozy, warm houses, or maybe inside our comfortable churches? I mean, have you noticed how the rich shut themselves away from the poor in luxury houses and splendid churches with no room for the homeless? And yet Emmanuel, God with us, always had his heart open to and identified with the least of these. So can you see the twinkling stars in the still black sky? On a lonesome dirt path, the exhausted couple struggle to find lodging, knocking on one door after another, and yet they receive the same response. Sorry, no room for you. Sorry, we're full. No room. No room. No room. No room for you, so the mantra echoes in their ears, driving them deeper into despair. When they came to the inn, the last ray of hope urged Joseph to knock. And when the door creaked open, a slim shaft of light filtered into the darkness. His voice, I imagine it's edged with desperation. Joseph, this weary traveler, pleaded for a room. And the rough response hit him like a cold wall of rejection. Sorry, sir, we have no room. Can you see his, his shoulders slumped under this added weight of sorrow? And he heads back into the shadows where the least of these live. The innkeeper's eyes silently followed the dragging steps and the scene pierces his heart. At that moment, he remembers another option, although it's not very comfortable. We do have a stable in the back, the innkeeper says. Can you imagine Joseph's head swiveling around? And he responds, Sir, I would be grateful for anything. You know, every deed of mercy makes music in heaven. That innkeeper, he led the couple in the dark and the stench of the sheltered animals wafted up that dingy track as the stable, 
eventually came into view. Entering the stable, the couple glances around a cow mood while hens cluck to ward off these intruders. After making Mary and Joseph as comfortable as he could, the innkeeper returned home. Hours later, a cry filled that filthy, foul-smelling structure. But an overjoyed father watched from above while angels sang the praises of him, the one who chose to send his son, his only son, on this dangerous mission to rescue a planet in rebellion. Our Heavenly Father's heart rejoiced when the infant's cry reached his ears because he knew his son would bring real hope to a world that desperately needed hope. Sir Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get, 
but we make a life by what we give. You know, sometimes I think about how God has provided us with more than enough blessings. And he has even blessed us with enough to give to those who are needy. But too often it is spent pampering our own selfish desires, and we actually rob the poor of the necessities of life. We crowd our wardrobes with designer fashions, clothing we seldom wear, and the least of these are covered in flimsy garments that do very little to shield them from the bitter cold weather. I think of how we pursue our pleasures, while certain less fortunate souls, like those who are suffering in prison cells, for example, they have no one to speak to them comforting words of encouragement. Like Mary and Joseph, poor people still hear the words of rejection. Sorry, we have no room for you. While the favored rich are at ease in their expensive homes, too many have nowhere to lay their heads. There is no room for them. No room. No room. No room for the least of these. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all the nations, and He shall separate them one from another. Yet yeah, Jesus painted a picture for His disciples, the scene of the great judgment day, and He described its decision as resting on one point. In the end, there will be only two classes, and their eternal destiny will be determined by what they have done or have neglected to do for Him in the person of the poor and the suffering. So all the days of your life, all the days of my life, Jesus has been very near to us in the people that we would perhaps consider to be the least of these. Did you turn toward Him? Or did you treat him with contempt? Did you give him food when he was hungry, water when he was thirsty, and care for him when he was sick? Did you know his name, or were you too busy to ask? For the poor you will have with you always, Jesus said. So essentially he was saying, you don't have to feel like I am very far from you. Millions upon millions of human souls are ready to perish, bound in chains of ignorance and sin. 
They've never so much as heard of or seen Christ's love for them. So were your condition and theirs to be reversed, what would you desire them to do for you? Christ's law of life, the standard by which every one of us must stand or fall in the judgment, is this. Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. From the cradle to the cross, Jesus understood the difficulties of the least of these. Although all things were created by him, as the Bible says, he did not feel himself superior to those he called the least of these. His heavenly father agonized as demonic malicious men executed his son. These executioners were also the least of these. And even though his father's heart was torn in two and he could not bear to watch, he loved them as well. Cloaking the scene in dark clouds, his father's heart wept. But that was not the end. Three days later, death lost its grip on the source of life. All this he freely offers to the least of these, to you 
and to me. And one day very soon he will return as he promised. And if someone asks him, what are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So even though human beings like me and like you nailed him to a criminal's cross, Jesus still calls us his friends. That is what God is like. The Bible promises he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. He is counting on being with you eternally. So we want to invite you to pray with us that God will help us all to love him and to be filled with love for those that Jesus called the least of these. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for revealing to us in your word your one desire to be with us eternally. You sent your one and only son Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us. Father, forgive us for closing our hearts to the needs of others. And please help us not to shut ourselves away from the poor in our own houses, our, our churches even, with no room for the least of these in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Whenever we bless others, we receive a greater blessing. Even here at It Is Written Canada, God often gives us the privilege of experiencing the joy of giving when we make free offers to people watching our programs. But we also realize that those free offers are not free. It is because of the support of people like you that we can send these Christian books and Bible studies to people all over Canada every day. And we want to thank you for making this possible. We have a request so that we can continue to keep this ministry on the air and continue providing these free books and Bible studies to people. Could we also ask you to consider supporting It Is Written Canada at this time of the year? In faith, we want to thank you so much for your financial support and for your prayers. And may God richly bless you this holiday season. You too can experience the fullness of life found in the words of Jesus when he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.